Hello and welcome to PMCLounge.com. In this video, we are going over a white paper that came out of PMI managing projects with teams that are remotely located, geographically distributed and multicultural. Now, I thought covering this white paper is the best thing we can do amid a pandemic because all of us are essentially doing this. All project managers today are working with teams that are remotely located, they are all geographically distributed and possibly they are multicultural as well because they could be from different countries if not continents. Within a country, a country like India, you may have different cultures uh, with people coming in from different states. So all of us, no matter what kind of projects we are dealing with today, amid a pandemic all of us are actually managing projects with such teams now as always this white paper is available for free from pmi.org and a direct link to this white paper will be available in the description below so download your own copy read it for yourself no copyright infringement intended this is a copyright work of pmi now they've given a basically a case study of sorts which i would like to skip and i'd like to come over the 10 things that we should know now we will start off with the challenges what are the challenges when you have teams that are remotely located right more and more organizations are moving into the matrix based delivery model let me know in the comments do you work in a matrix based delivery model where team members don't necessarily report to you you are not responsible for their uh, you know performance reviews you're not responsible for granting them leaves but you are just a project manager that is taking up uh, taking care of a project and you have teams that come in from different uh, departments you know so more and more people are working with such teams uh, culturally diverse teams uh, that are located across geographies and this leads to unprecedented operational challenges while you are executing distributed agile or you're executing cloud-based projects and i'd like to add any kind of projects right when you're working on software projects where uh, the team members can work uh, remotely then of course you have such challenges so there is this excellence enabler forum of pmi i am not going into the detail of this i'll just look at the 10 global rules for the global manager so if you're a global manager, what are the global rules that you should basically abide by and follow? The EEF, something that I spoke of earlier, this is not something that you know we are getting into the details of. It's basically a forum from PMI. And this team basically uh, brainstormed internally to list the common challenges from their collective experience in delivering projects. And this team, this team identify top 10 focus areas. What are these focus areas? We'll go over all of these 10 one by one. So let's start off with number one, which is expectation management. And again, this is referring to the case study, which we are not covering. We'll just try to understand what expectation management really is. In global virtual teams, it is imperative to establish clarity on the structure, role, scope of work, process and goals and a time bound feedback mechanism within the team, right? So we are talking about expectation management and this is an expectation. Transparency works very well for the virtual teams. So you need to be transparent. Transparency is something that we need to look at. Establish powerful intuition and listening skills. If a stakeholder has poor communication skills, ask him or her to repeat the key takeaways after you have shared with them so you know you don't have to shy away from asking for uh, you know making sure that they reiterate what you have told them so that you know they understand what the key takeaway was uh, based on your communication transparency again something we talked about and then analyze stakeholder feedback within the core team 
to keep them on the same page. So these are some of the things that we can do for managing expectations. Number two is cultural sensitivity. Cultures differ enormously when it comes to decision making. The project manager needs to understand the difference in native cultures, work styles, beliefs, practices, defined standards, variations in maturity levels of processes followed in different geographies, Working days and timings. This is also important. Some people in some cultures like to wake up very early. Some cultures, some people, people of a certain generation might not be waking up too early, right? So these are the kind of things that you need to understand to be able to build camaraderie among team members across the different locations. So what you can do is you can have inclusive inclusivity and in-depth multicultural training for managers and team members at an organization level this is something that you as a project manager can suggest if you're a manager then look for doing something like this take time to learn and share with the team how things would work in different geographies that is also important right imagine if you're in a different geography how would things work there right ask people hold virtual office hours by being online being available on the phone and being available at regular times. Just because you are working remotely does not mean that you are not available on all these different communication avenues. Number three is direct and indirect communication and collaboration. Now, virtual teams may arrive at a very different conclusions from the same set of details, right? If you talk about, if there are two people, uh, that are remotely located and they are talking about the same set of details, it is still possible that they arrive at different conclusion, which is what this point is basically trying to point at. <laughs> uh, so direct and indirect communication and collaboration. How you can do that? Know your team members and create the sense of a team by ensuring they are joined at the hip. Standard set of objectives, goals, and vision statements is imperative in virtual teams. Tell me, when was the last time you and your team sat down and talked about the objectives, goals, and vision statement for a project that you guys are delivering? If not, you know, try to pay more importance to something like this because virtual teams, this works for virtual teams, right? These objectives and goals have to be shared and discussed at regular frequencies. That's why I asked, when was the last time you guys did this? Allocate tasks clearly and avoid any ambiguity to avoid issues between the team members. This is extremely important. Use team meetings, newsletters, and other forums to encourage active participation from team members. You don't see them, you never know if they are attending your meetings or they've just logged in and they are sleeping, right? So you need to ensure, you need to encourage active participation from everyone. Number four is project governance. Now, how do you govern projects that are basically, you know, uh, being led uh, virtually? Managing virtual project teams becomes very challenging when there is no or little clarity in roles and responsibilities of the team working on projects and or there is no clear escalation path defined for the project. So you're working with someone, you're not happy, You there is some issue which you would like to escalate, but there's no escalation path defined. So this is also part of project governance. Now, here are the three key takeaways. Encourage face-to-face -face team interactions during kickoff in projects of long duration where there is a fixed budget for travel. Now, of course, this is not possible today, then obviously make use of video conferencing. Set up video conferencing or telepresence facilities if face-to-face -face communication is not practical, not practical or not feasible on a regular basis, which is something we are experiencing these days, right? Define specific roles and responsibilities within the team through RACI metrics. We've talked about RACI metrics. I'll share a link to uh, that video in the description below if you want to know more about RACI metrics. Number five, five out of 10, right? This is fifth out of 10, knowledge management. Now, in most cases, there is no standard mechanism to mine knowledge uniformly across locations. So when the team is working on a project, a lot of knowledge gets created. How do you mine this knowledge? How do you tap on it, right? So coupled with lack of face-to-face -face interaction and cultural variances, 
this can be a major deterrent so how do you sort this out implement a common knowledge management system and encourage employees across the organization to contribute to a central knowledge repository this is something that you can look into create a structure and mechanism to leverage knowledge across locations through the knowledge management system ensure the knowledge is being effectively shared with others in the virtual team through communication tools these can be mailing groups newsletters online tools wikis blogs and intranet so you need to basically manage communication uh, manage knowledge as well that is extremely important there's no point in generating so much knowledge if you cannot tap or if you cannot find when you need it the most project planning and tracking this is point number six the skills Skill levels of remote teams are often assumed based on prior experience in estimating and managing as well as relying heavily upon inputs from those geographies. Due to lack of clarity about common objectives, standardization, resource-wise role and responsibility definition and processes, there may be significant differences in execution, speed, scope and planning. So this is a problem, right? This is basically a problem of planning and tracking your project how can you deal with this align virtual team members contribution to expected deliverables and milestones align them ensure use of standard planning tools processes across various delivery centers or various locations where your team is basically located generate a buy-in and agreement from all team members on their assigned tasks in the project along with their preferences escalation path escalation paths and a standard set of processes and tools for configuration governance as well as change management processes so that's how this is basically a point in project planning and tra tracking and that's how you do it when your team is located in remote uh, in remote uh, locations right okay let's move on to number seven which is leadership skills and managerial intervention how do i lead people i don't see this is the question that we are trying to understand how do you lead people that you don't even see so virtual leadership requires additional competencies in making effective leaders it is important that the domestic or regional leaders be clearly identified to take charge in the absence of primary leader thus in distributed teams a distributed leadership approach may also be adopted here are some of the points on how to adopt uh, you know virtual leadership manage conflict by providing equal opportunities across diverse locations expanding the project into new locations monitoring the performance of existing teams and getting new teams to perform on par with existing teams and you should do all this without causing a hindrance to client expectations spend additional time with teams across locations to understand and not just assume what they want or what they know they must place an additional emphasis on coordinating with and motivating individuals who are separated by time zones and cultures so as a virtual leader you should be paying extra attention to the teams that are located across locations ensure there are well-defined policies on diversity and inclusivity referred by the team regularly i see a lot of large software companies pay a lot of uh, you know attention uh, on this point basically coming up with uh, you know well-defined policies for diversity and inclusivity it is called dni diversity and inclusion number eight is processes and methodologies it is critical for teams to demonstrate consistency and maintain standards in their processes and methodologies this ensures successful execution of the project basically and how do you achieve it implement and ensure usage of strong process driven systems dashboards to reduce manual intervention in process adherence how can you this is a question that you should ask yourself how can you reduce manual intervention in the process adherence whatever process that your project adheres to how can you reduce manual intervention establish strong handover processes between virtual teams this ensures the deliverables are handed over with continuity keeping the time zone and multicultural environments in mind it is possible that some projects you know for some projects teams are working round the clock 
uh, in different time zones, right? So you need to have a strong handover processes in such a scenario as well as otherwise. Provide joint process audits spanning locations to adhere to and align them to the defined processes, audits, governance, and methodologies. So this is basically about processes and methodologies. Number nine is technology. Now, technology plays a very vital role in managing virtual teams, right? So for effective use of technology and tools, it is imperative that the project team is trained on the usage aspects and have strong technical support as well. Here are some of the tools which all of us uh, must be aware of IBM Jazz, Team Concert, Microsoft Team Foundation Server, Atlassian Tools, right? All these are basically tools that can be used for today. You can talk about Zoom, you can talk about uh, Microsoft Teams is still there, you can talk about Cisco WebEx. All these are tools, right? All this is basically making use of technology. And these are just communication tools. You have other cloud computing, social media, and DevOps. These kind of uh, technology might help to reduce costs and automate development as well as operations. Some collaboration tools uh, to help project managers to collaborate with virtual project team through a central hub for sharing information. These are Teambox, Campfire, Active Collab, Huddle, and there are several others, right? Project management tools. Uh, you have got Microsoft Project, Basecamp, Primavera, Rike, Project Turf, Apollo, Bricks, Teamwork, PM, Redmine. All these are project management tools. Then you have scheduling tools, Doodle, TimeBridge, Schedule Ones, Time and Date. Then you've got document storage and file sharing, Dropbox, Google Drive, SharePoint. Then you have meeting tools, WebEx, WebConnect, GoToMeeting, Google Hangouts, Zoom, <laughs> high-end video conference tools. So then you've got Cisco Telepresence, Polycom Telepresence, right? Then you have instant messaging tool. They have not mentioned Slack, but you have Slack. <clears throat> Link is now called uh, basically Microsoft Teams. Uh, you've got WebEx Connect, Jabber. Right, all these are basically tools. And finally, number 10 is other best practices. What are some of the other best practices? You can come up with rewards and recognition. You can come up with fun at work. You can use gamification to improve people management and create friendly and fun work environment. This is important, right? People are working remotely. They don't even see their teams. You need commitment from senior management to do all this. So these were the 10 key takeaways, 10 key points when it comes to working with teams that are located remotely, that are geographically distributed, which like I said earlier, is the case with all of us in the current scenario. So I hope you got value out of this video. I hope you're going to apply uh, some of what you have learned in this uh, at PMC Lounge, our focus is not just to ensure that you get yourselves the PMP certification, but we also want you to stay abreast with what's happening in the world of project management. And that is the reason we like to cover reports and white papers like these. So smash that like button if you got value out of this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.